In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the inside of a commercial coffee roasting machine. We'll look at the main components, how they work, and then what type of maintenance is involved to keep something like this running. Stick around. Welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. Thanks for joining me today. I've got to open my roaster up. This is a commercial coffee roasting machine. It's a sample roaster from Mill City. It's a 500 gram roaster. It's been a great machine. I haven't had any problems with this other than normal maintenance. And we'll talk about what normal maintenance is. But I've got to open this roaster up more than I've opened it up in the past because I'm hearing a noise. I'm hearing either a chain noise or a bearing noise coming from the middle of the machine. So that would be the rear bearing or the chain. So I've got to take this whole thing apart to be able to get to that. And I thought I would take some pictures and show you and kind of give you an idea of what's inside this machine, what it's made of, how it works. So first, I want to hit the outside of the machine real quick. You know, you see this stainless steel cover that's here, and it looks kind of maybe like it's just for show, but it's really it for its purpose, and that is it's a heat shield. This roaster is made of a lot of steel, heavy steel, and it gets really hot. It keeps me, protects me from getting burned. I'm going to start over on this side of the machine. That's the front of the roaster, and that's where you see the trier. The trier is used to smell the coffee, to look at the color, and to pull samples during a roast. You can actually pull out coffee and pull it out quickly and have a tasting for wherever you're at in that roast just to see how the coffee is developing. Trier is really cool. It's a great tool to have. Also you'll see that there is the handle that opens the door on the drum roaster. The drum is spinning, the coffee's tumbling, and when that door opens up the coffee just starts shooting out into the cooling tray. Then you'll also see three wires that go into the front of the coffee roaster. The first wire is up on the upper right hand corner. This is a probe. It has a metal stick on the end of the wire and it's reading temperatures from the drum. It's reading from the highest point in the drum and that is where the exhaust, the hot air leaves the roaster and goes out through the exhaust system. The second probe is the PID probe. That is the one that is reading the temperature on the control panel display here on the roaster. And then the third probe is down on the door that opens up. That is the bean probe. While the beans are being rotated in the drum, that probe lays in the middle of the bean mass and it's reading the temperature of the beans. That's the BT or the bean temperature. Lastly, there is a bearing that you see on the front of the roaster here. This is the front bearing that I replace just about annually. I'm able to go longer now because I'm using a high temperature grease, so more like maybe every 14 months compared to um, less than a year, probably nine months with just a standard bearing grease. The roaster gets really hot and you're going to have temperatures of around 450 to 500 degrees at its highest on this roaster while it's doing a pre-warm and that temperature is enough to liquefy just standard industrial grease and then the bearings start to the, the oil starts to evaporate or the grease starts to evaporate and the bearing dries up so what I do is I buy a brand new bearing I clean out all the old grease and then I pack it with fresh high temperature grease and then I use that bearing and it lasts about 14 months before I end up changing it out. The bearing costs about 10 or $15, it's not a big deal. It takes about maybe five or 10 minutes to change the bearing out, the front bearing. Let's go to the side of the machine now. So I have an on off switch. I have a roaster button. That roaster button opens up the solenoid, allows gas to come into the roaster and turns the igniter on. We'll take a look at that uh, when we look inside the roaster. And then the timer, there's a button for the timer and a button for the cooling tray to turn the cooling tray on and off. The cooling tray is external, but it plugs into the roaster itself, so the roaster handles all the electronics. This roaster runs on natural gas or propane. I'm using natural gas, but it requires electricity. It can run on 110 or 220. I'm running 110 here in my home. It has a step-down unit to allow it to run 110. 
And this roaster has four different uh, components that require electricity. The cooling fan, the airflow, the drum, and then the control panel here to provide the readout for the PID. It also has, this PID also has a uh, emergency shutoff, kind of a safety switch, so that when I do my pre-warming, if I happen to be setting some stuff up during my pre-warming, I can let it climb to a certain temperature and then shut off. And that's what I do. I let it climb to about 450 degrees and then it cycles until I'm ready to level off my heat and set me up for a roast. All right, it's time to open up the drum roaster and check it out. I took off the chaff collector, I took off the heat shield, and I took off the main cover of the roaster. All right, so now we're looking at the inside of the roaster and there's really two halves that I want to share with you. The first half on the left, that deals with the drum, the gas, and the igniter. That's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the drum up um, above the two gas diffusers. So the natural gas comes into the machine and it comes out of those two heads. It's basically like diffusers you'd see on a stove. This is a 10,000 BTU roaster. It's very powerful and it gets really hot underneath there. And that's another reason why that front bearing gets um, worn out quicker is because there's more heat on the front end of that roaster than there would be on the back end of the roaster. This area I have access to and I clean out after every roasting session. I vacuum it out with a vacuum, get the chaff out of there. The other half of the roasting unit I've never seen before. This is the first time that I've taken a look at this and it has all of the mechanical and electrical devices for the roaster. So the mechanical stuff is going to be that bearing, the rear bearing, which you can see on uh, just to the left of the top of the chain, and then the chain itself with the sprockets, the top and the bottom sprocket. I really don't want to take off that rear bearing. I never have. I hope to never have to. But um, if you've ever had to do something like that on a roaster like this, I'd like to hear your experience. Share that in the comments. Please, I, I'm anxious to find somebody that's had to do this. All right, the chain is another mechanical component along with the sprocket itself, uh, top and bottom sprocket. That seems to be an area where noise is coming from. We'll take a look at that in a second. And then lastly, the electrical components. So we've got a motor that is turning the drum. That's down here at the bottom that connects to the bottom sprocket. Then we have the electrical box. The power comes in and that power is dispersed throughout the roaster to a um, it's a power block where it's like kind of like a fuse block or a fuse box where the power comes into your home and then you have all of these different wires that route out. Well, I've got something similar to that here in this roaster. All right, one last component and that is this tube that runs across the top of the roaster. That is the exhaust tube. So to the front of the roaster at the very top there is a chrome box in that area, right next to the funnel, the hot air from the roaster goes up through an opening there and is exhausted through the tube across the top of the roaster and then goes through the fan unit, which is drawing the air. And then the chaff goes, falls down into the chaff collector and the smoke and the hot air go up through the venting system. It's pretty cool how all that works and there is maintenance involved in that and we'll talk about that as we conclude with um, what type of maintenance is involved. I replaced the front bearing because it was time to replace the front bearing. I aligned the front of the drum and then I aligned the chain. It's just a matter of loosening a couple screws on that top sprocket, adjusting it so it lined up perfectly with the bottom sprocket, tightening that back up, and then I lubricated the chain and the noise went away. It got a lot quieter. And so why did that chain, why did that sprocket move? It moved because I had adjusted the drum itself, moving the drum closer to the front of the roaster because I was getting some chaff that was falling down between the front roaster plate and the drum itself. There was a little bit of a gap and so the chaff was falling down in there and I would get a pile that I would have to vacuum up. So I didn't realize that that was going to influence the chain alignment. And then it was time to button it all back up, put the cover back on, put the heat shield back on, put the chaff collector back on, and here you see it's back together. All of that together took me about four hours. 
I want to talk to you about maintenance. This is really important, not only for this roaster, but for the roaster that you have. But before I do that, first, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today. If there's something that I've said, if there is um, questions you have about my roaster, or if there's experiences that you've had with roaster maintenance, share some of those stories with me. I would love to hear that. If it's been bearings, it's, if it's been mechanical, please tell me the type of roaster you're using and share your experience. That would be interesting for me to read, and I think others might appreciate that as well. Also, if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button. That would be great. Um, that helps me out a lot. Also, if you've liked this video, hit the like button. That tells other home coffee roasters that something good's going on here at the Virtual Coffee Lab. All right, so the maintenance that I always do after every roasting session is that I get a small hand vacuum out with a little uh, tube end on it, and I clean up all of the chaff. I clean out the chaff collector, I clean out any chaff that got out from the drum, I clean the work surface, and I wipe down the coffee roaster. It's really important that the work area stays clean. That's a top tip. That'll help your roaster live longer. Because when we have a dirty environment, an environment where there's a lot of chaff and dust floating around, that is going to influence the electronics the airflow of the unit it'll get clogged up it could influence how your roaster reads temperatures it can start getting hot easier um, if it's a smaller roaster because it doesn't have the type of air flow necessary to breathe properly to perform properly so always keep your work area clean always keep the roaster itself clean and free from dust and dirt and you'll have a roaster that lasts you a long time if you're interested in a drum roasting machine, I've got a whole playlist that deals with roasting on a drum roaster. You can check that out up here. If you're new to home coffee roasting, you'll notice that in all of my different videos, I am using different type of roasting devices. And so check those out. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope that you guys have a great week roasting. See you next time.